The benefits of coffee are numerous and surprising. It reduces the risk of prostate cancer, protects the liver from cirrhosis, and improves cognitive ability in the elderly. Unfortunately, however, there is a big problem today. Coffee is produced in many different qualities, and any system, any change can significantly alter the amount of caffeine and polyphenols. In this video, you will learn whether coffee is favorable for health, how to consume it properly, whether you should add milk to it. We will discuss whether coffee should be avoided if you have hypertension, heart problems, gastroesophageal reflux or eye conditions including glaucoma and more. We'll also cover contraindications to drinking coffee, give tips on how to maximize the benefits, and indicate a safe daily coffee allowance for adults and children. We will answer an interesting question. Who lives longer, those who love coffee or those who ignore it? This video will be extremely informative and helpful. So, if you want to become a master of your health, click like and let's get started. Up until a few years ago, I thought everyone agreed that coffee was good for your health. We even made a few videos touting all the benefits of coffee and the numerous studies supporting those benefits. However, all of these findings were just associations and did not explain the true cause and effect relationship between coffee consumption and health benefits. The first benefit of coffee lies in its ability to affect the size of our blood vessels. The effect on blood vessel constriction is crucial to our health because every organ in the body needs to be well nourished. Caffeine has the ability to constrict blood vessels as soon as it enters the body. Blood vessels constrict just like when we exercise or get angry. You might think that the narrowing of blood vessels has a negative effect precisely because it reduces blood flow to the organs. However, this is only a temporary effect, just like the constriction of blood vessels during exercise. However, in the long run, exercise to constrict and dilate blood vessels is beneficial, just as caffeine has been linked to controlling hypertension. The main reason is that coffee is rich in polyphenols, antioxidants, the main one being chlorogenic acid. Thanks to chlorogenic acid, we can fight inflammation and free radicals. Unfortunately, however, not all coffee is prepared the same way, and some aggressive roasting methods can cause a complete loss of anti-inflammatory properties. The more heavily roasted the coffee beans are, the less antioxidants they contain. The lighter the roast, the higher the polyphenol content. Fortunately, polyphenols are not altered during the decaffeination process of coffee. So decaffeinated coffee is a great way to preserve its antioxidant activity. Do you drink your coffee black or do you like to add a little milk to it? Unfortunately, a study has shown that just a teaspoon of coffee diluted with 17 milliliters of milk reduces its antioxidant effect by 46%. And if you drink a cafe latte with 100 milliliters of milk, the antioxidant effect is reduced by 95%, virtually losing all of its beneficial properties. It is believed that proteins in milk bind to polyphenols and interfere with their absorption by the body. However, this does not happen when consuming soy milk. There are special bacteria in the intestines that break down and digest soy, the proteins releasing the polyphenols. Another important aspect of coffee is that it can decrease iron absorption. According to this study, adding coffee to a meal can reduce iron absorption by 39% after eating a hamburger. This effect doesn't occur if you drink coffee an hour before a meal, but if you drink it even an hour after, the effect will still occur, precisely because after a meal. The stomach usually takes about two hours to empty. Therefore, if you suffer from anemia or iron deficiency for various reasons, you should be careful with coffee or avoid drinks with caffeine. However, although iron is an essential mineral for the proper functioning of some body functions, Excess iron can be very harmful. Very often, excess iron causes the same symptoms as iron deficiency, and you can make the big mistake of taking iron supplements when in fact you need to reduce iron. In fact, when iron builds up in the body, it has a pro-oxidant effect, actually rusting our bodies to the point where studies show that elevated blood ferritin levels are associated with an increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes, and this negative health effect of excess iron is also supported by studies linking it to the more serious problems of Alzheimer's disease and shortened DNA telomere length. Furthermore, in people who suffer from gout, adding coffee to reduce iron absorption reduces inflammatory attacks associated with excess uric acid in the joints. So, if this is your case, 
if you suffer from gout, it's definitely worth using coffee to reduce iron absorption. But not only coffee has this effect. You can find many other herbal products that I talked about in another video. What about mortality rates? Is it true that coffee drinkers live longer? According to this systematic literature review, there is a correlation between the amount of coffee consumed and increased life expectancy. However, the same study of people under 55 years of age showed an inverse relationship, meaning that people who drink too much coffee may have a shorter life expectancy. Finally, in recent years, a comprehensive study analyzing all types of populations was conducted, and unfortunately, it showed that this mortality reduction effect could no longer mean that coffee prolongs life or reduces the likelihood of death. But let's get to the most asked question. What is the main problem with coffee? The main problem with coffee is that the drug we all use in coffee is caffeine, which is actually increasingly used in energy drinks to attract young people. Caffeine is a neurostimulant that can have long-term health consequences. In fact, caffeine suppresses and competes with adenosine, a substance that our bodies naturally produce to signal that we are tired. So its levels are very low in the morning, but gradually increase as we spend more and more time awake alerting us that we are tired and should rest or go to bed. When we consume caffeine, adenosine is inhibited, the sympathetic nervous system is activated, the heart rate increases, blood vessels constrict, and the brain is activated, which is why caffeine and coffee have been extolled since the Industrial Revolution, for allowing people to focus and work more efficiently. The main problem comes from the fact that the increased use of caffeine to block adenosine receptors causes adenosine to accumulate between neurons because of the body's ability to adapt. When adenosine cannot act on the receptors because they are blocked by caffeine, the body begins to form more adenosine receptors over time. As a result, when caffeine levels in the body decrease and become insufficient to block all receptors, the activated adenosine receptors begin to produce a stimulating effect. This can lead to experiencing caffeine withdrawal symptoms, including headaches, stomach aches, and as is common for many people in the middle of the day, feelings of extreme fatigue. Indeed, caffeine is associated with increased gastroesophageal reflux, but a similar effect has been observed with decaffeinated coffee. However, some studies also show that caffeine consumption is associated with an increased risk of urinary incontinence in men and women. Moreover, in other in-depth studies, such as a 2014 meta-analysis, Caffeine consumption is directly linked to insomnia, as shown in this study. People with glaucoma should avoid caffeine because its effects on the circulatory system can further exacerbate the intraocular pressure they suffer from. The problems associated with excessive caffeine consumption and insomnia or difficulty falling asleep are now well known. And this clinical study also showed that eliminating coffee and caffeine from a person's diet reduced the incidence of epileptic seizures and problems with epilepsy. If you overdo caffeine, you may also suffer from tachycardia, the sensation of your heart beating very fast, precisely because caffeine can produce adrenaline and stimulate the nervous system. But if you're worried that caffeine will cause you heart problems or atrial fibrillation, fortunately, this systematic literature review shows that there is no link between caffeine consumption and atrial fibrillation. Moreover, in some specific situations, two or three cups of coffee a day may be protective reducing the risk of atrial fibrillation and exacerbating the serious problems associated with excessive caffeine consumption. It has been found that the maximum lethal amount that can kill a boy or young man may be about 12 cans of energy drinks. So, to summarize, on the one hand, coffee does contain polyphenols that help lower blood pressure, reduce inflammation and prevent oxidation. But on the other hand, it contains caffeine, which can alter feelings of fatigue, constrict blood vessels, and be linked to a host of other problems such as glaucoma of the eyes, risk of incontinence, risk of fractures, and many other central nervous system disorders. It is true that coffee can have a protective effect on people suffering from cirrhosis of the liver. It has also been shown that coffee can help people with conditions such as Parkinson's disease. For athletes, a cup of coffee can improve the ability to lift weights. However, the main difference is that the ability to metabolize caffeine varies greatly from person to person. And there are also genetic variations. Some people metabolize faster, others slower. And this difference draws a clear line between coffee that is good for you and coffee that is bad for you. Conclusion 
the relationship between caffeine and coffee consumption and the likelihood or risk of developing hypertension has been analyzed. The more coffee you drink, the higher your risk of developing hypertension if you metabolize caffeine slowly. The more coffee you drink, the lower your risk of developing hypertension if you metabolize caffeine quickly. On the one hand, for every cup of coffee you drink, slow metabolizers double their risk of heart attack, while for fast metabolizers, one cup of coffee a day cuts their risk of heart attack in half. On the other hand, for fast metabolizers, one cup of coffee a day reduces the risk of heart attack by half. So, coffee can indeed provide many health benefits if your body metabolizes and removes caffeine efficiently. However, you should avoid drinking coffee with added milk or over-roasted coffee, as these options may contain fewer health benefits. In the case of poor caffeine metabolism, when caffeine lingers in the system for too long, it can contribute to insomnia, cardiovascular problems, hypertension, and increase the risk of heart attack. Although today we are often advised not to drink three to four cups of coffee a day, this video finally helped us realize that such advice is not appropriate for everyone, as there are significant differences between people and between different types of coffee. Some people metabolize caffeine quickly, and coffee can be beneficial to them, while others metabolize it more slowly, and both coffee and caffeine can be harmful. Some coffees are also rich in polyphenols, especially those that are roasted quickly and easily. On the other hand, those that are roasted for a very long time do not even have the expected anti-inflammatory effect, because all the polyphenols are lost. Adding milk destroys the anti-inflammatory effect, while adding soy milk preserves the effect. Decaffeinated coffee is a good alternative because, as we have seen, it gets rid of caffeine from the body, which has few health benefits. However, with the perfect roasting described earlier, the polyphenols are retained. For these reasons, I myself have decided to reduce my coffee intake and spend a few days or weeks without any coffee at all to see how my body reacts. I encourage you to also evaluate your own caffeine metabolism. If you are now addicted to coffee, can't do without it, and can't wake up every morning without drinking it, that's not a good sign. On the other hand, if you have a good metabolism that allows you to fall asleep even with coffee, as in my case, you may be lucky and can drink as much as you want. So, what are the recommended coffee consumption rates for children, teens, and adults after all? The recommended intake of caffeine, including coffee, varies depending on age and individual sensitivity to caffeine. It is important to remember that caffeine is present not only in coffee, but also in tea, chocolate, some soft drinks, and energy drinks, so total caffeine intake throughout the day should be considered. For children, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that children under the age of 12 avoid caffeine in any amount. For children over the age of 12, the recommended maximum intake is no more than 100 milligrams of caffeine per day, which is roughly equivalent to one cup of coffee. For adolescents, it is recommended that adolescents limit their caffeine intake to 100 milligrams per day. It is important to pay attention to potential caffeine intake from all sources, including energy drinks, which may contain significantly more caffeine. For adults, for most adults, moderate caffeine intake, defined as 200 to 300 milligrams per day, approximately two to three cups of coffee, is considered acceptable and can be incorporated into a healthy lifestyle. However, caffeine sensitivity can vary widely, and some people may need to limit their caffeine intake due to medical recommendations. Special considerations. Pregnant and breastfeeding women should limit caffeine intake to 200 milligrams per day due to potential effects on the fetus and newborn. People with certain medical conditions, such as arrhythmia or hypertension, may need to further reduce their caffeine intake. It is always a good idea to consult with your doctor regarding an individually appropriate level of caffeine intake, especially if you have diseases or conditions that may be exacerbated by caffeine consumption. More information on this topic can be found at the links in the description below this video and on our channel. Subscribe and hit the bell for all notifications. Please like and share this video with your friends. Thanks to our sponsors for their support. I eagerly await your comments and encourage you to watch these useful videos.